Welcome friends, welcome to the channel this December 2019. I'm your host, GM Danielson, and this is Horrorcraft. <laughs> yes, yes, it is December, which means of course Christmas. Which means, of course, to any fans of horror and creepy, scary Christmas. <laughs> oh, pardon my evil laugh, friends, and pardon me if I don't rub my hands with a wicked glee. Now that we are past Halloween, I do believe I can confess that it is likely Christmas is even more of a favorite holiday of mine. True, Halloween gets me excited beyond all measurable bounds. Thanksgiving, too, though not quite as special, is a time for fun, and those special creepy Thanksgiving cannibal stories, am I right? <laughs> but Christmas is that extra special holiday, the time when we finally hit my favorite season of the year, winter. It's a time of paradoxes, too, a time of Christian goodliness, but also wicked scariness. I love the paradox, friends, and I hope you do too. Before we begin with our first story, let me remind any of you who are listening who may not have yet subscribed to please do that. Sink your clean fangs into that subscribe button and follow me like a little devil. It does help me, and I do love when my subscriber count grows. It makes me so happy. Up for this volume two of scary Christmas stories, I do believe I have a doozy. Oh, did I forget to mention? These are true scary Christmas stories, friends. Verified true at that. Up first is one by a kitty 18. We all have those family members who come over for Christmas or try to. I think most of my U.S. subscribers, perhaps even those not within the U.S., have seen Lampoon's A Christmas Vacation, the kind of disasters that can happen around Christmas. In that vein, as it were, let me narrate to you this true story about families not so good, titled Crazy Aunt Ruins Christmas. There is a lot that happened within our family before this event, so let me explain. My mom's brother, who, for the sake of this story I'll call Clark, had been married to this woman for over 20 years, and now they had one child together. Growing up, I have always been told that my aunt was a little bit off, and was instructed by my mother to stay clear of her if I had the chance. She seemed pretty normal to me, until I was around ten, and she started harassing my mother and my grandparents. She would hit on my grandfather and show up to their house unannounced, and would occasionally try to start fights. We had to block her on all our phones, and my uncle told her that she was no longer welcome at ours or our grandparents' property. Years had gone by without much issue towards us, but for the past few years, she had been mentally abusing my uncle along with my cousin, and in a fit of rage, she urinated on the floor in front of my cousin. Yes, full squatted and relieved herself. My cousin has since moved out. With all of the background information out of the way, let's get to the main story. It was Christmas Eve a year ago, and as for tradition, we were having dinner at my grandparents' house. It was my grandparents, mom, dad, brother, uncle, cousin, and their dog, Holly. We were at the dinner table, which was in full view of the front porch windows, when we heard the doorbell ring furiously and the door being pounded on. As we looked over at the windows, who did we see? Her. My uncle got up and went outside to talk to her. From the table, we could hear a bit of yelling, and my uncle opened the door and came back in, when all of a sudden she grabbed the dog 
and threatened to take it away if my uncle did not give her money. At this point, my parents were outside watching all of this along with a few neighbors. My uncle got in the car with her, and before she got in to drive away, she yelled, What the f*** are you looking at? I know I'm beautiful, and God loves me. Then she got in the car and sped off. We were all at the windows, stunned and confused. All the while, my cousin was texting my father to make sure he was okay. He let us know that he was, and that he was going to an ATM to get her some money so they would leave her alone. About an hour later, my uncle got back with the dog and told us that she was basically holding him hostage because he didn't give her enough money. But finally, with a bit of bribing, she brought him back, and I haven't seen her since. The rest of that night obviously had a lot of tension, and I watched the road behind us all the way home, scared that she was following us. Since that incident, things have escalated at their house. We have found out that she is doing drugs, and she has been cheating on my uncle for a while now. For those asking why we didn't call the cops, he told us not to. I don't know why, but he hasn't done much about her, except tell her that he wants a divorce, but nothing has come of that. Christmas Taxi Driver by Sassy Bumble Bear. <laughs> I'm from a rural town set in the East Midlands in the UK, and everything is quite spread out. Mum lived on a small street on the edge of town, tucked up into the corner, with very nice lighting from the street lights at the time. The council turned off some of the certain areas to save money. The street was a dead end and shaped like a T, with my mum living at the dead end of the top on the left. I'm also about five foot two and weighed about 105 pounds at the time. The incident happened on Christmas Eve in 2011, so I was only 21. I was visiting home from my university up north for Christmas and had gone out with some friends from the area for a catch-up and to celebrate the season. It had gone late and I needed to catch a taxi to get home. I didn't want to call Mum at 1am Christmas morning to come back and pick me up, and it was too far to walk. My friends had all headed home, as they lived much closer to the town centre than I. Unfortunately, I hadn't realised that the taxis were all charging double fares because it was Christmas, and I had only saved a tenner, the usual amount it would cost me to get back, rather than the twenty it was going to cost me that night. I didn't have my blank card, silly, I know, and thought that I was going to have to wake my mum after all, when one driver pointed out that it was Christmas, so he would do it for ten. He leant over and opened the passenger door, and I climbed in. Now, in the UK, black hackney cabs don't really take passengers in the front seat. You're meant to sit in the back area normally. I was drunk and honestly just grateful for the ride and didn't think anything of it at first. I gave him the street name and we set off. He seemed friendly, asking how my night had been, what my Christmas plans were, and just regular chatter. At some point, I mentioned that I was visiting from university and he asked me what I was studying, to which I replied motorsport engineering. At this point, he became fascinated with me and what I was studying. He kept making comments about how he would never have imagined a girl as young and beautiful as I would be interested in cars, how amazing that was, that he thought it was incredible, etc., etc. I thought it was odd, but I had some weird reactions when people found out what I did before. I apparently didn't look like an engineer, whatever that looks like. So I just smiled and nodded to keep things friendly, as we were nearly at my street. Then, things got a bit weirder. We pulled up to my street, a few doors down from my house, and of course, it was super dark, new moon and all. 
I was drunk, tired, and a bit creeped out by his obsession with me and my engineering degree and what I was studying at this point. He was still going on about it, how he would never have believed it, I was too pretty for that, he would love to see me working on cars, etc. So I just tried to give him the money and get out. But he wouldn't take it. He just ignored my hand waving the money around and kept talking. He had also leaned a lot closer at this point. I tried the door handle to let myself out, but the locks were engaged and I couldn't find a way of unlocking it in the dark. He completely ignored my attempts to open the door and just kept talking at me. I can't remember anything he said anymore, mostly because he carried on the same way he had been, but this time with more references to watching me bend over. I was really freaked out at this point, and had tried to say that I needed to go several times, but he just kept ignoring me and saying how he loved how incredible I was. We'd been sat in the dark at the end of my street for about half an hour at this point, with his engine and lights off. There was no way anyone from the houses would have been able to tell there was anyone in the car if they had looked out of their windows. Then I saw a light turn on in my next door neighbor's window, up the street from us, and I blurted out that that must be my mum waiting for me, and that I'd better head inside before she called me and started to worry. The look on his face was genuinely terrifying. He looked like a combination of angry, disappointed, and also contemplative, like he was trying to decide something. I waved my money at him again and pulled on the door handle, and he popped the locks and let me out. I ran all the way to my front door and let myself in before locking everything behind me and peeking out of the curtains. He didn't drive away for another few minutes, and I remember being aware that he had to go by my house, and also must have known that I lied about it being the light from my mum. It wasn't even my house. I never saw him again, and went back to the uni four days later. I told my mum what happened, and she insisted on driving me around for the rest of my stay. To this day, I still get nervous taking taxis and always message someone when I have to use one of those so that they'd know where I am and when to expect me. Pray we don't meet Overly Exciting Christmas by Dungeon Cat. Okay guys, I'm gonna keep this short. Yesterday evening, Christmas Eve, my fiancé and daughter came home from doing Christmas with my family to find a bullet had been shot into my daughter's room. We called the police, took pictures of the points of impact, and looked for the bullet. We couldn't find it, but the officer took a report and the apartment maintenance came to take a look. Fast forward tonight, getting home from Christmas with my fiancé's family and picking up his daughter for the week. We've just moved in, so we asked them to straighten up their toys to the right places. Five minutes later, my six-year-old came running to the living room yelling, Mama, I think I found the bullet. Sure enough, she had found it under her bed. I collected the bullet as my fiancé called the police. We turned the bullet in, and I hope that person who shot it into my room never comes by my house again. My goodness, friends, what luck. Or rather, it reminds me of Betsy Ten Boom's words to her sister when the shard of glass came from upstairs during the Nazi bombing raid of the Netherlands. Corey offhandedly said to her sister, Oh heavens, if I had been up there. To which Betsy replied, There are no ifs in God's world. I suppose there were no ifs in that story either, friends. The family was always going to be out on Christmas Eve, and the person driving by was always going to shoot when they weren't there. I suppose that does give an added measure of comfort to an otherwise inexplicable and chilling story. 
<laughs> or perhaps not. Verified true either way, friends. In fact, for those curious among you, you can check the link to the story in the video description. I encourage you to do so, for in the case of this particular story, the author included pictures. Yes, friends, actual pictures of the bullet holes in their daughter's room. An added layer of fear to an otherwise terrifying story that I certainly hope happens to none of you this Christmas or any future Christmas for as long as you have Christmases. <laughs> Moving on, friends, to our next story. Dear Christmas Ruiners, by Menta I Giant. This was roughly a decade and some change ago. I was in the sixth grade and home alone because of Christmas break and divorced parents. I lived in one of the bigger towns of Alaska and lived in a middle-class neighborhood, houses spaced pretty far with very long driveways down each. But the next door neighbors knew us well enough to know if something didn't look right. It was about 4 p.m. I believe, and my mom was off work early but stopped to get groceries, kind of a gift itself to not go shopping. I hadn't grown out of my back problems yet and couldn't stand walking around for over an hour. Anyways, I was in my room watching a movie with Jackie Chan, Around the World in 80 Days, when I heard a knocking on the door. I didn't answer, thinking whoever it was would just be asking for my mom or dad about solar panels or something. But then I heard it slowly getting louder and louder, and around the third time, it got louder, and then I started to get scared. I was always told to call the cops if people acted as suspicious as them, to call them right away, but I guess I was just too terrified at the moment, being in pajamas and enjoying my favorite movie at the time. So, not knowing what to do while two guys were literally banging on the door, I called my mom. I told her what was going on, and she said it was probably just Mormons. Not for you guys, but what the heck, mom? We were in Alaska. I didn't know what a Mormon was. And not to worry. I told her how it kept getting louder, though, and thought that they might be breaking through the door at any moment. The door had pretty big but thick stained glass around chest height. She told me just to calm down until she heard it through the phone too. This only took place within about a minute, but every 10 seconds or so it grew to even louder. My mom started to freak out. She told me to stay right in my room with the door locked and not to make a sound while she called the cops. We hung up, and while I waited for my dad to answer my call, I was looking around for anything in my room. I grabbed a t-ball bat and sat on my bed, freaking out. I didn't have a window facing the front of the house, just the side. Finally, Dad answered, and I told him what was going on and that Mom was calling the cops right now. He wasn't legally allowed to be on the property, but he was very protective of me. He lived very close to the police station at the time and raced over to me. While I was waiting and calling for the police or my mom again, I decided to peek my head out. The way the house was set up, I could stalk out of my bedroom door and see the backyard, and without walking more than two steps, was also able to peek out the corner and see through the living room bay window. I saw that they'd reversed their car almost right up to our garage door, and I could partially see through the door two men pounding away at it. I stayed there and saw the first guy send the other guy around the back, and worse, saw his face as he went around the house. I hid before he could see me and waited. I realized after what they were doing the one around the back tried to open our glass sliding doors to the balcony. 
Thankfully, not only were they locked, but a piece of wood was in the rubber, so that if they had overpowered the lock, it still would not have opened more than an inch. We always put little wooden dowels in the door track as a double measure of safety. He started to try to break it as well, and then my mom called me back, crying and wanting to know if I was okay. She was pulled over at the store's gas station and said that the police would be there as soon as possible, and she was on her way right now also. After about a minute of both of them trying through the front door and back, they regrouped back near the front door, and I was really tired of them making me feel scared. So I walked out of my room to the front door, yelling at them in a tank top and shorts, and holding my bat. They didn't hear me until I was right at the door and spooked them. They ran to their car and drove away, and only when they got in the car did I open the door and continue yelling at them. I have forgotten what I was yelling, but they drove off either way. (sighs) Mom got home a couple of minutes later and held me until my dad came home, and I went out to his truck and showed him I was okay and told them how I had scared them off. He hugged me and gave me a kiss, leaving before he and Mom could fight over him being there. Thankfully, at that time, she didn't care at all, and she kept talking to me about the men until the cops came over about an hour later. They didn't seem too interested in talking to me until I told him that I could easily tell him the face of the guy at the front door and a little of the other guy as well. The cops told me that they suspected they were a group that had been breaking into houses in the past two weeks, stealing Christmas presents and other stuff, but this was what linked them together. Fortunately, they were found a couple of weeks later, and the police linked them to over ten other burglaries. The funny thing is, we stayed up all night telling each other stories, but waiting for those two men to come back even when they weren't going to come back at all. Funny how a child's mind works. As most of you know who are already subscribed to this channel, the strangeness that one story introduces is usually increased and eclipsed with the next succeeding tale. (laughs) And I do believe that that story demonstrated what I just said to be true. I'll be honest, friends, though I don't wish that on anyone, there is nothing quite like a story about a lonely house in Alaska, haunted by two strangers. Nothing creepier yet, until we read our next story, friends, titled, Update, Overly Exciting Christmas by the author who we heard earlier, Dungeon Cat. I posted my original story about the bullet hole in my daughter's wall here. I appreciate all the tips and concern for us and our safety. Maintenance has come and patched the holes. I spoke to the management office, and it was an accidental discharge, and the owner of the gun is no longer living on the property, which is all good news. On to the update about the creep from the comments. If you haven't read the comments section, there's a thirty-something-year-old man stalking my six-year-old. Anyhow, management took down his info, name, physical description, truck description, and is passing it to the courtesy officer that lives and works here. They are just as concerned about the behavior as we are and plan on citing him for trespassing. We've been advised to call a number and explain the situation to them and to go on from there. As this unfolds, I will keep you updated. I appreciate all of you and every comment left. I feel good knowing I'm not overreacting. If you'd like to see pictures of the bullet holes and gifts, I added links to the original post. My fiancé and I are getting a video monitor for the girls' room that updates to our cell phones. We also have made an agreement about a weapon, and will have one this week. The police officer in our neighborhood came and is starting a report. He agreed the entire situation, especially the letter, 
were incredibly weird. Nothing criminal has happened yet, but with the report as stuff happens, they can add to it. <laughs> Good to know that family is all right on Christmas. It warms the cockles of my vampiric heart. The only thing that would warm the cockles of my heart more is to get on to our next and last story this evening, friends. I think we shall end with a Walmart story. My US-based subscribers certainly know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoy this story, friends, by Taylor119, Walmart Creepo. That certainly is a rare occurrence at Walmart. A couple of years ago, my wife and I were doing a little Christmas shopping while our kids were with their grandparents for the evening. We had gone to Walmart, and we were there for quite a while. At one point, I had noticed a group of three guys in a sort of triangle formation, all on the phone with each other. I thought that was odd, but didn't really put two and two together, until later. As we were walking to the toy section, I started to see what was going on. The three guys, mid-twenties to early thirties, seemingly normal-looking athletic types, were stalking and following a young, maybe twenty-something pretty girl around the toy section. She was obviously shopping for her kids. She was alone. She was completely oblivious. My first thought was that they knew her and were maybe trying to prank her, but upon further watching and listening, the more my wife and I got a bad feeling about it. At one point, one of the guys had lost visual, and he sprinted past us, bumping into my wife and knocking her purse to the ground. I stopped the lady and told her what was going on. Clearly shaken, she quickly finished her shopping and asked a manager to escort her out. I had also notified several employees about what I had been seeing. The three guys quickly disappeared after that. End of story, right? <laughs> no, this is where it gets really creepy. Later that evening, after we had gotten home, my wife decided to post on Facebook about the incident, as like a PSA sort of deal. Always be vigilant, blah blah blah. Well, shortly after posting this, the guy who was calling all the shots privately messaged my wife. He said he was part of the security team and that she was suspected of shoplifting and that we may very well have caused her to get away because of our interference. Basically, we blocked and ignored this guy, moved on with our lives. If he had been part of some sting operation, the manager who escorted the lady out would have said something, or perhaps one of the employees I've notified would have said something. But alas, nothing. Plus, if they were some sort of secret Walmart covert theft prevention ops, you'd think they would have been trained not to be so obvious. I don't know what their intentions were, but they obviously weren't good. Always be vigilant, friends, apparently and especially now on Christmas, and always carry a gun. Much love to this community. Stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> 